This is David Triana. I am the host of Making Connections, the interview show, a product of Conexion Media Group. And this morning, we have a great guest. As everybody knows, election season is hot throughout the nation, at the national level, at the state level, obviously, and more importantly for all of us here living in, in this case, the area of the Emerald Coast, the local level. And so today we have a guest uh, that is running for the Okaloosa County Board of Commissioners. She's running for the uh, District 3 County Commission, and her name is Carrie Pitzer. Good morning, Carrie. How are you doing today? Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing great. I appreciate the offer to come on. Thank you for being with us. I think you are the second uh, candidate that, that we've interviewed, and we hope to interview a few more before uh, it is all over, because it's pretty close already, isn't it? Uh, on 20 yeah. August is the uh, the day that uh, you will hopefully find out that uh, you have become a county commissioner, correct? Correct. That's right. Early voting starts August 10th through the 17th, and uh, the day, the big day is August 20th. August 20 being the big day, yes, but uh, again, uh, you have been uh, getting you know ready for this, I'm sure, before you decided to run, and then once you started running, you've been technically running all over the place, right, trying to get to, to know <laughs> people. Right. Um, obviously, we may have some, uh, you know, some audience here uh, in Making Connections that may not know who Carrie Pitzer is, so please tell us a little bit about who Carrie Pitzer is. Absolutely. So um, my name is Carrie Pitzer, and I am running for County Commissioner District 3 here in Okaloosa County. And no matter where you live, you vote for all of your county commissioners. So that's something I like people to know as well. And uh, this race is a universal primary. So that means everybody gets to vote, no matter what your party affiliate is. Get out and register to vote. You got till Monday. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to get people out and about. So I was born and raised in the Deep South. I spent my summers as a tourist here in Okaloosa County, coming down to the Emerald Coast beaches and enjoying those, um, have watched it grown over many, many years to be a much bigger uh, tourism area than it was as a child. Um, I've been an active duty military spouse for 20 years. My husband retired this past Friday. Uh, we are really thankful for his mm. service. For, I know David, your service, everyone's service here. Um, really appreciate the military in this area and all they bring to us as well. So we've been in Florida for 10 years, Okaloosa County for eight and a half. And uh, we live in the north part of the county in that District 3 corridor. And uh, we're just really excited uh, that he can exit public service and I can enter public service. So uh, we have two children. They're both about to graduate from high school in the next couple of years. And um, lots of farm animals. My husband says, I love animals and he loves me. <laughs> so I, I am the farmer of the group, but uh, we really love living in Okaloosa County. Absolutely. Outstanding. Well, congratulations to you as a family of the retiree from the Air Force and to your husband uh, for uh, serving uh, for so long. And uh, obviously now a well-earned retirement and uh, you know, pass the thanks uh, from us uh, for his service. Um, so, Gary, at the district, District Three itself, uh, what kind of the air, what kind of an area does it cover? For those that may yeah. not know, so district, so Okaloosa County has five districts, and District Three is the largest land mass. So these districts are mapped out every time there is a census, and so I'm sure the next time it comes up with as much growth as we have, those lines will vary a little. But currently, it is the northern and western side of our county. It goes from the Alabama border um, all the way to Highway 85 in Crestview. It kind of splits right down there. And we go down through Eglin. And then we've got parts of Valparaiso, Fort Walton, Niceville. It gets a little dip down there at the bottom as well. So um, it's the largest landmass district of the five. Got it. So you do represent this uh, as the other candidates in the other districts, a certain area of the of the county. But the decision making as a county uh, board uh, obviously affects everyone. So that's the important thing for everyone to know. And that is uh, also why it's, uh, it's such a great thing that anyone can vote uh, during this election. Correct. Yes. What it's motivated really important you? for people to know that your county commissioners make decisions for your whole county. And so you vote for the whole county. We just need to represent the people of our area, specifically their concerns. And is there anything specific that motivated you to uh, throw your hand in the ring for the county commission? <laughs> sure. I, uh, hopefully there's something specific for everyone to run, right? 
So, um, you know, my heart is in the North County where my home is, where I live. And currently we are studying how much growth we're having. Okaloosa County is the second fastest growing county and the second fastest growing state in America. So we are, we are busting at the seams with all this growth. And uh, the county commissioner started looking at everywhere north of Eglin. What were we, how are we going to grow up there? What was that going to look like? And so um, I got involved in kind of watching that process a couple of years ago pretty closely as things were starting to grow in a very rapid way and wanted to make sure that we were still protecting the character of our areas. You know, we have the, the beautiful beaches and we have beautiful farmlands. We have forest. We have metropolitan areas. We have such a diverse county. It's important to really appreciate each pocket. And so um, in April, April 1st, my husband thought it was a joke. It wasn't. <laughs> I threw my name into that <laughs> and uh, I said, I feel like I can represent the people of this county very well. I work in the South County. Um, I own my own business, have for 20 years. And um, I work in the South County, I understand the needs and the frustration with the traffic and the tourism, excitement. And then my husband being active duty, I understand the military needs, but I chose to live on a farm in the North County for privacy and that farm life. So I can really relate to everyone across the county. And obviously, there's a big study going on, the North Planning Study, you know, that uh, is trying to uh, get the word uh, from people to uh, both uh, get their vision about what they, they foresee for the county, for people to understand the vision itself of, of those that are going to be leading this. What is the areas uh, for growth that you envision for the county itself, uh, whether it's the north side or whatever whatever other other um, things that you may be envisioning as, as a commissioner that you are going to kind of push in a sense? Well, you know, so the state identified four metropolitan areas in Okaloosa County. So we've got Destin, Fort Walton, Niceville, and Crestview. So, you know, we have identified those as a metropolitan area, meaning they're going to double in size in the next 10 years. So I feel like we need to really focus our growth as best we can and planning appropriately with infrastructure and housing needs in those areas, not allowing for that urban sprawl that's gonna affect everyone. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna be a metropolitan area, let's be a powerhouse of a metropolitan area. Let's talk about tr public transportation, you know, housing, jobs, industry. How can we really build up those metropolitan areas well and not allow it to continue to kind of sprawl all over and then at, lead to frustrations mm -hmm. for the citizens? Yeah, because bottom line, all those things, you know, affect the overall, like the country, the uh, the county itself, whether it's housing, and then what, how are people going to travel around in this yeah. in this county? Because obviously, you know, I, I live in Navarre. I had a meeting the other day uh, at a certain time uh, in Crestview, and oh. I always call my Crestview friends. I said, what do you think? I have a meeting at three o'clock. I need to go from Herbert Field uh, to be there at three 15 minutes prior, like the military does, right? 15 minutes prior to the meeting or whatever. What time should I leave? I'm counting on my friends to tell me that live in Cresby to kind of guide me as to, yeah, yeah. you're going to be okay because traffic is not as bad because 85 is really terrible. Yeah. I mean, we really have one road that takes us from north to south. And as much as we've been growing, a lot of our industry has been in the south county. So we've got a lot of folks, uh, definitely military, coming from north to south on a bottlenecked road. And, you know, that is a state road. A lot of people think the commissioners handle that road. We work closely with the state. But that is a state road, State Road 85. So they are looking at expanding pretty quickly the next couple of years, that to be a six lane road um, and, and trying to see how, or maybe four lanes and four lanes are running some different studies right now, from my understanding, meeting with Jason Autry over at Public Works to understand how can we get people places faster um, and get home faster. And as you know, you know, military has an hour recall. I worry about those guys. Can they get to work on time? And if they are recalled, are they able to make it? And that's something that as a spouse has always weighed on me, not being the active duty member, but realizing if he can't get there, are we in trouble? Is he in trouble? You know, you, you worry about those things. You bet. And that's an important factor for the military, for sure. I have I had suffered from a couple of those situations in a couple of bases where the traffic, you know, got you and uh, you did not make it back in time for a particular uh, recall situation. In this case, uh, one of them was a real world one. And unfortunately, I suffered the consequences of being five minutes late, which is not a good thing. Um, which do you consider to be the country's most pressing infrastructure needs? Maybe one or two that you think are the most important ones out there. Yeah, so we've got the big, um, you know, the North County has got the bypass that they're working on bringing in, and it's really a piece to the puzzle that's going to solve the problem. 
I was meeting yesterday or two days ago, I guess now, with um, some folks that are in the next portion of that corridor that's going to be connecting. They want a big circle around Crestview um, so that everyone can get places a lot faster and easier without coming down that 85. And so we just did the PJ Adams portion. Now we're working on the bypass portion. And then the next phase is going to be honestly going potentially through some neighborhoods. And that's affecting a lot of homes, 140 people. And so we really want to make sure that we're doing our right studying. Um, I'm really for planned appropriate growth, not a reactive county, but a planned county. And because we have been growing so rapidly, we are constant in the state of reaction. And we've got to turn that around and say, we need to plan 40, 50 years out because 40, 50 right. years ago, they said we'd never be here. And here we are impacting our citizens. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're really looking towards future growth. You yes, know? So and then time does, does fly. And I think there's been a few situations where the, the leadership here has, you know, gotten themselves caught in a, between a hard, a rock and a hard place because the <laughs> planning did not take place 10 or 15 years ago. The right. bridge, you know, that is going to uh, go over Des or to Destin from Fort Walton Beach, I think was one of those examples of people not, you know, thinking about it, but not doing what it was necessary to make it happen and or convince the community, obviously, right. that it was an important uh, Project is well underway. I'm excited about that. I do have to travel that way often. I got there the other day at a bad time in tourism and uh, the locals getting places and it took about two hours, you know, and if we can just make it through this portion, it's really going to help out a lot for sure. I think so too. I think so too. Before we go into some housing uh, issues, because obviously that is also a huge uh, deal here. Um, tell us, how do you, how do you plan to make a difference uh, if you are elected to the county commission? When I am elected is what you should say, right? <laughs> when so, you are elected, I hope. <laughs> so, you know, one big thing is, is that I'm already making differences. And I think this really speaks truly, um, you know, and doing my political campaigning, I was making phone calls to um, random citizens to introduce myself, especially the older population who may not come or participate in my live streams. And I met a man by the name of Gary Arnold here in Holt, Florida, and he said, I'm really glad you're on the phone. I've been trying to reach someone for about five years. I, my house burned to the ground and my shop that was beside it burnt to the ground. I used to do uh, meat processing. I would process deers and cows and make sausage. And that was going to be my retirement plan. And I said, okay, so what's going on? And he said, well, I built my house back. And when I went to pull the permit for my shop and reopen my business, uh, I was told I couldn't do that. And I said, well, why did they tell you that? And he gave me some reasons. And I said, that doesn't quite add up to me. Let me see what I can do. And so this, the end of this past week, um, I went and I met with growth management. I explained what was going on in Gary's behalf. And within 24 hours, he was given the red light, I mean, the green light to go ahead and move forward. They called him personally and apologized for any confusion. And they are going to help him get through even the business licensing processing. And then we put him in touch with the USDA Daryl Williams and said, let's get you some grants, Gary, get you up and running. The North County needs things like this, businesses like yours. We've been hurting without it. And, you know, I think taking the time to meet people, putting them in touch with the right person and actually making impact for the citizens. I plan to be available as I am now. My cell phone is public. My husband doesn't love that because it rings off the hook. <laughs> but um, I really love hearing from people on their issues and then helping them solve the problem. I may not be able to personally solve it, but I can put you in touch with the right person. And that's really what it's about is community connections and problem solving. So wonderful. Obviously, um, you know, political uh, uh, positions are a thankless job in a sense, in many ways, you know, people are always looking for the bad rather than the good things that uh, may be going out of whatever whatever office uh, we, may be, we may be talking about. Uh, will you be able to be a full-time commissioner considering your uh, personal life? Uh, yes. Business, so, all those kind of things? Yeah, so I will be a full-time commissioner for sure. I will not be closing my business, but I have a wonderful staff. And that was part of me deciding to run, was sitting them down and saying, can, can we support this and not impact your lives as well or our clients' lives? So Thankfully, my business is at the point where I can control the things that I do and take. It's not a retail front. It's a client-based business. So I 100% will be a full-time commissioner. Wonderful. 
Uh, let's talk about housing a little bit, because I know that's another big issue, obviously, that is related to all these things we're talking about, obviously, the traffic, the transportation issues, uh, infrastructure buildup, and the growth that continues, because this area is such a beautiful area that, by all means, it will continue to grow. Uh, hopefully, you know, the communities here in the area will take care of uh, or will um, implement programs to keep our military personnel that are retiring or coming out of the Air Force, and obviously we have now the Army with the 7th Special Forces Group, a lot of talent, a lot of great people are retiring, like your husband, and we want to keep those people here, and that's part of the growth also, obviously, and the strategies that are employed can, uh, can help keep the talent here. Um, but do you think there's a housing issue? Of course there is, right? I'm sure there is. I yes, heard anyone yes. say so. Um, and that, and and what type, what kind of things you know, do you propose or strategies um, do you have in mind that, to address that main issue of housing needs? Right. So I kind of track the current real estate uh, world based on this housing question that comes up often. So currently in Oklahoma County, we have about 2,300 homes on the market. So, you know, there's not really so much a housing shortage. It's more of affordable. What can we afford, right? Because a lot of the average median price is around $550,000 for a house in Oglosa County. And so we find that our sheriff's departments, our teachers, um, our, our RNs, our first responders are having to live maybe in neighboring counties or even up in Alabama to be able to, to work here, but they can't afford to live here. And that's a problem for us, right? We want to keep our people local and we want to support all levels of um, education and all levels of income, honestly, you know, and so we've got to make sure that number one, we're offering good jobs so that we aren't just having jobs that don't pay well, but we're fighting for that pay wage. The county this year is doing a 4% pay increase and it, their insurance is not going to increase. For the last three years, we've had a 3% increase in pay and an insurance increase and it just made it nothing. So I was happy to see that, that uh, the insurance isn't going to be increasing this year and they're actually going to be able to get a raise. That was a big deal for me watching the budget talks happening right now. Um, so the other thing is, is with the housing is that, you know, I'm a military spouse, so I feel like I can be really honest about this. As a military family coming to Eglin, which we have a ton coming from overseas or different long-term um, tours, we have to house our people. And so Eglin wanted to say we need more production on base and we need less housing on base. I can understand that mentality, but where are you gonna put your people? It's our job as a military to house our people. And so I'm also excited to hear that the commissioners have um, worked to purchase some of those orphan properties. So an orphan property is something that Eglin owns outside of the gates, different little pockets that they've purchased over time or traded people over time, not sure their expansion plans. They've identified 13 of these now, I guess 12, since the county's made an offer to buy one. And those are in Fort Walton area. They're right outside the gates. That's where those folks need to wow. go. But, you know, we need to utilize these for some affordable housing and make sure that we are getting our people to work, from work. I mean, as you know, as a military family, when my husband's stuck in two hours of traffic a day and he's gone for six months at a time, those two hours are the two hours he could be spending with his family. And so we need to make sure we're yes. getting this to work. And, you know, affordable housing being the key thing. Uh, Herbert Field has a perfect example right behind, right in the back gate of Herbert Field, a, 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 an affordable uh, building of, of uh, apartment uh, apartments was built. And I think, and I mean, I, that's I was pretty close to when I arrived here and I was still looking for a place to, to rent, you know, because I wasn't sure if I went to state, to be honest with you. And Hi. eventually I said, yeah, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. And um, <laughs> that, apartment complex uh it was uh, i think probably halfway through being built and because it was going to be an affordable type of uh concept it, they were already taken it was 100 percent already committed uh so those kind of things will be successful they will be filled that is for sure with its military or in the case of uh, uh non-military personnel a major issue is you know in the tourist industry, the restaurant industry, the lodging industry, we have a lot of people working in those industries, uh, not making a lot of money. And in Destin, you know, with the money they make, for example, they just can't uh, can't purchase or even rent a, uh, a, a good home. Right, right. And, you know, we got to make sure that we're putting people in the right areas and the right character of the areas. You know, we don't want to be having um, the people who are working in the hotel industry and in the restaurant industry. Uh, living up here in the far end of the North County because they can afford it. That's their income right there trying to travel on time away as well. And and their children are in school up here. And 
So we just, we need to make sure that we're looking for everyone in the character of their area, making sure they have available housing. Wonderful, wonderful. And again, related, we spoke about public transportation. That is going to, that's another one of the things that I've observed. I've been, haven't been here now 19 years and having lived in major cities and or coming from a large town like El Paso, where there's public transportation, that even though us as Americans, we don't like, we don't like to get on <laughs> buses and trains, unless we're on, on a tourist trip, you know, we right. like our cars and driving wherever we need to, including the you know, convenience store at the corner sometimes. Right. Uh, that's just the way it is. But uh, I think, you know, with, with solid, you know, uh, timely and, uh, um, inexpensive public transportation, people will, will eventually see the benefits of that and use it. And I think that's one of the, that has been one of the things that I've seen here tried, but not uh, hard enough to to make it successful. I think you know because we do have a little bit of tr public transportation. What do you think about public transportation being looked at as a possible solution to the traffic situation in many ways? And uh, yeah, so recently around. I had a session with a group of advisors um, that I had that have helped me educate myself and brainstorm different things. And we were talking about public transportation and someone threw out, why don't we get the military to fly helicopters for their flight hours from the north to the south? I was like, okay, I think we're going a little far on the public transportation <laughs> thing, right? But I like where you're going with your mindset. So, you know, number one, you know, the county respects the cities and the municipalities. And a lot of times the public transportation is going to come from a city level of what they yes. have going on. And so we want to support that, but we don't want to step on someone's toes. You know, we want to encourage them. How can we help them? Now, as far as the county goes, we do have like the elder services has a bus that goes around and can help with different things. I think that needs to be looked at differently. Um, and then we really need to solve if we're going to have all of these folks coming from north to south. Can we can we apply jobs up here? Can we bring industry jobs to Holt? You know, Shore River Ranch is coming, but we've got a net Holt Industrial Park that we've already paid for that interstate exchange 42 years ago. We need to be utilizing that. And um, there's a road that goes from the Holt Industrial Park, Log Lake Road, goes all the way to Range Road, which goes on to Eglin. And so I really mm -hmm. want to meet with Eglin and say, how can we get a one-way gate guard where we have military folks that are able to hop on the interstate, get there, they can go down one way, and then they can come back up north one way. And it's okay if we have to close it for missions. We understand that. We close 85 for missions all the time. Um, the military will appreciate that on the days that that's able to be used. And uh, I really want to work with Eglin to find some different ways to get their folks to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you think about the uh, local, or question, the Live Local Act, Senate Bill 102 that was signed? And uh, what are your thoughts on that? And how can it help <laughs> our area? Yeah. I think it's a great thing. You know, I also think every time that we... Um, dip our hands into any sort of government federal funding or grants we have to watch what really comes attached to it so you know i don't know it, the ins and outs of it perfect enough to say i'm 100 percent everything in it is great because sometimes there's little bits that i want to question but i do think that we need to work with people to live locally and be able to afford their lives we shouldn't be pushing out the locals based on the tourist driven or military driven you know, the people of this county, you and I, and I know you said you live in Navarre. I used to live in Navarre for a couple of years and um, the planning there wasn't quite up to par. So I thought I'd jump ship and come over to Okaloosa County. And now I'm wanting to make sure Okaloosa County stays planned in these areas and allows the locals to be the priority. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, what about the, on the surcharge uh, part of the of the equation here? Are there any, are there any projects uh, that, uh, you think, you know, are, are good projects and some that may not be as good that um, in your thoughts here as a commissioner yeah. when you become one? <laughs> so you're talking about the surtax, correct? So in 2019, yes. we voted in as a county to go from six to six and a half percent. And that portion was for infrastructure. And then when 2021 came around, we voted to go from six and a half to seven. And that portion is for the schools. A lot of people get confused and think the commissioners are part of the schools. We are not. We are a support system for them, but that is a separate entity in the state of Florida. It's not that way in most states, so people often think that. Um, so, yeah, so we've accomplished 23 of the infrastructure projects that have been put out there, and I do think that they're all needed. My personal problem with the whole concept is we shouldn't be working backwards with our tax dollars. Your tax dollars should be working for you and forwards, not fixing previous problems. We obviously have to dig out of that hole. And so I'm glad to see that we are rapidly getting some things accomplished. 
Um, again, I met with Jason Autry over at Public Works because I had a lot of people questioning different parts of the roads that hadn't been fixed. And they said, we've heard there's $100 million that's come in in the surtax. Why does my road still have a pothole in Shalimar and unincorporated Shalimar? And the reason is, is when we wrote that surtax, we did not put in maintain in the, in the verbiage. Mm. So we did not maintain any current road. One word. One word, one word. And so, you know, I want to make sure when we're looking forward to putting that back into play, having people vote that again, that they understand all that it's going to cover and all that it's not. So these infrastructure money can only be for new projects or projects that never were accomplished, not for maintaining. And so again, we're looking at the future in a good way, but we're missing that step of making sure we're up to par. Yeah. Outstanding. Outstanding. So a lot of things to, to, to talk about, obviously, uh, we could cover a whole bunch more. Right. Uh, but what um, one of the things that I think is important, uh, uh, per, this is just personal opinion, David Triana speaking, and uh, people will hear me say it every time I get a chance. That I think if more women were part of government, we would be a better right. government overall, right. regardless <laughs> of what level. So we it's like great to, to see a lot of women running for the county commission. To be honest with you, and 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 uh, I uh, I just hope uh, that uh, that it happens that uh, more women join that commission. Uh, not saying that the guys that are there are bad because they're very good people. I just think, you know, uh, it it, uh, it makes a difference. I don't know why I feel that, but uh, I think we've shown that uh, women have a different view in certain things. They're, I don't know, they're a lot more careful in some things that uh, yes, men can quickly react to. And maybe that's what it takes to, you know, come up with some better plans and strategies that are thought about, you know, in a, a, a in a, in, a, in a better way, in a sense. And then together with the gentlemen that are in there coming up with some good products. Uh, uh, that, again, just personal thought. Okay? Sure. So well, I, I don't want to get anybody in trouble for saying that. No, well, I think that a lot of times something that women bring, especially if you're a mom, is problem-solving skills. And sometimes you've got to get a group of people to work together, make the best decision for all. You know, I'm from a large family, um, and so I have five sisters plus a sister-in-law, and I've got a bunch of brother-in-laws. And so just deciding where to eat dinner sometimes can be a whole thing, right? But getting, making the decision for the best of the group and then getting everyone to be happy as we move forward is a big thing um, that I definitely can bring to the table very naturally in a laid-back manner, efficient and effectively. Uh, but I definitely intend to create a problem solve. Outstanding, outstanding. Well, uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, I'd like to uh, give you, uh, uh, you know, a couple of minutes or whatever you want to take to uh, say a few words to people out there that uh, have not made a decision on who they're going to vote for. Uh, maybe don't know, you know, who you were until now. And uh, what would you like to say to that person that uh, is uh, thinking about voting and uh, is going to go out there sometime in the near future uh, yeah. to do so? Well, my first thing is, thank you for giving me the time to have this platform. I really appreciate it. You know, I think it's important that we recognize that our local government officials have more impact on us than even the president does. And a lot of times, even me in the past, I've gotten wrapped up on a national level. But being involved in your local government, your vote counts. Every single vote counts. And so we want to make sure that you're educated and that you have a chance to ask me questions. On Tuesday nights, I do a live stream at seven o'clock. You can join on Facebook. You can ask questions there. You can send me questions ahead of time. And I spend my days meeting with people one-on-one. -on -one. I'm happy to come talk to you, your family, anyone that you want to meet me and get to ask me any questions that you have. Nothing's off the table, right? So I have three right. main, main points that I'm running for. One is planned appropriate growth. So we know that we're growing, but we need to control the growth in a manner that doesn't impact the whole. And the second is transparency and availability. A lot of times transparency has a negative connotation. That's not what I mean. What I mean is, is if you're trying to find uh, something to go to in the county, you have to go to a million different calendars to find those items. I wanna make sure we have one master calendar. I met with John Hofstad and I said, we need a master calendar that I know everything in the county is going on on mm -hmm. Tuesday. I'm not hunting for it because that feels like you're hiding something, even if you're not. And so just making those connections to let our, our constituents and our citizens know you can understand what's going on in your community and not question it. And then having that availability, you can call, you can text, you can email, and I'm going to get back to you. I'm not going to ignore you. I'm not going to say you won't understand. I may not have the answer, but I'm happy to sit with you through us finding the answer. And then the third is protecting the character, the character of our county. 
Um, I really stand up with farmers and I think that we have to protect our food source in America. That's a big thing for me. We have been losing 25% of our farmlands every year and we will not be able to feed ourselves in the future if we don't stand up together for those farmers who are actively farming. And then uh, we have beautiful beaches and you know, you'll see the commissioners doing this now. We're purchasing homes to collapse, to give public beaches back to the public. We've got to make sure we're not doing that in the future where we're collapsing neighborhoods to give land back to farmers, right? We need to plan appropriately for the character of our area. So I hope to have your vote on or before August 20th. Uh, Carrie Pitzer for County Commissioner District 3. Thank you very much, Carrie. And let's show uh, your website. And you're also on Facebook, I'm sure, correct? I think yeah. I've seen you there. Yeah, let's Facebook, see. Make sure you show, show. For those of you that are watching and want to learn more about Carrie Pitzer, uh, we invite you to go to her website, obviously. Uh, yeah, here's her Facebook. Facebook page. This is the Facebook page that has uh, a lot of information, including some videos that uh, you prepare there, I'm sure. And some, yes. Like a little baby there you're holding. Yeah, I and... a little baby to hold the other day. I was eating today. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, lots of good pictures there. Additionally, you can connect directly to her page, to her website yeah. right there. And so the website is Kerry, it's K E R I for commissioner.com. And you can find out all about um, the main issues that um, Kerry uh, believes in and wants to fight for or work on uh, right there on her page. If you want to support her efforts, uh, you have a donation section there, obviously, and also a way to connect. You said you, said you also have uh, some uh, uh, webinars, or what did you call that? Uh, can you say that again, please? Oh. We do live streams on Tuesday streams. night at 7 p.m. Um, actually, later today, I'm a little behind because I've been out meeting folks the last couple of days, but we will get those up. So every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Also, I want to let you know we are doing a free breakfast the Saturday before um, voting day. So that will be on August 17th at the Baker Community Center. Um, bring your family, bring your kids, and we're going to do a pancake some politics. So you can meet me in person and get free pancake breakfast and coffee and stop by. Wonderful, wonderful. We also want to let everybody know that uh, Conexión Media Group is hosting a Meet the Candidates um, event, a networking social that we are going to do in Mary Esther. So we're bringing as many of the candidates that want to come out uh, and join us to network. But we are going to have uh, special guests, and that includes Carrie uh, Pitzer, Mary a Marianne Wines. We are going to have David Schmidt and hopefully Sheriff Aiden, and maybe one other that will be our special guests. They are going to get the chance to speak to the audience for a longer time. Um, and uh, we want to invite everyone out there that uh, wants to meet them to come to um, El Paso, restaurant in Mary Esther that's going to be on the 14th of August from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. We're going to treat everyone to some delicious uh, Mexican food there at El Paso. We're going to have some door prizes because, yes, we want people to network and meet each other. And then we're also going to have some live music. So it's going to have it's going to be a fun way of meeting the candidates, just like she's having her breakfast and all those good things. Uh, we're going to do it in the in an evening environment. Um, the meet and greet the candidates networking social again 14 august mary esther's el paso restaurant carrie i want to thank you for being with us in making connections uh, we appreciate uh, appreciate it and we wish you the best uh in your um in your um, um election here coming up and everything that you've been doing uh very impressive uh presentations that you've made in some of the uh, uh the, uh, the uh, programs that i've gone to the uh, forums and uh, wish you the best uh, with everything that uh, is taking place between now and 20 August when you become a county yeah. commissioner. Right. <laughs> well, I appreciate the time and uh, I look forward to getting to meet all of your followers in person. And uh, I'm really excited about August 14th. Is that what you said? 13th. That's on my calendar. 14, 14 August. 14. There you August. go. So <laughs> join us over here in the South End at yep. uh, Mary Esther, in Mary Esther at the restaurant. Uh, thank you very much. This has been a special edition of Making Connections Interview Show, a product of Conexion Media Group, uh, meeting, uh, uh, in this case, Carrie Pitzer, who's running for the county commission. And uh, we'll have a couple other uh, shows in the uh, next few days. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, may the Lord uh, bless you and protect you. Have a good one. Thank you. Do you want to advertise to thousands of Hispanics and non-Hispanics in North, Northwest Florida and Southern Alabama? 
¿Quieres promover tu empresa y producto a miles de hispanos y no hispanos? Connection is your most cost-efficient way to do so. Conexión es tu solución. We are the largest English and Spanish publication in our region. Our primary mission is to inform, guide, and educate our readers via interesting content. Somos la publicación mensual en español y en inglés de la más grande distribución en toda la región. Además de las 5,000 copias en papel, tenemos activas las redes sociales, incluyendo Facebook, on Twitter e Instagram, y también por Internet. Conexión is your bridge to connect you to the growing Hispanic market in the region. Call us. Llámanos.